Okay, before we do the next lab, I've got a few slides to show you about the um, device trees. So we've already mentioned device trees and that the assignment for context and security is controlled by the device trees and depending on if you assign it to A7 Secure or Cortex M4 means it locks it to one of the two cores and if you assign it to A7 Non-Secure then it's available as a shared peripheral. So we're going to have a look a bit more detail about that now before we do the next lab where you'll actually be setting up a peripheral or a IP to be assigned to one of the functions. So for those of you who have not played with uh, STM32's Cortex-Ms, we have a tool called STM32 CubeMX which is our pin assignment tool and code configurator. So this tool will let you assign all the peripherals to the pins. It lets you configure each of those peripherals as you go along. Then you can configure the clocks and generate the project uh, workspace for whichever IDE tool chain that you've selected. So it's a very, very powerful tool and we've now enhanced it so that it now supports the MPU. So it's now gonna generate the um, device trees needed for the Linux side of the application. So the Cubemx will generate, as soon as you're assigning all your peripherals, it will generate the device trees. And there are three different device trees that are going to be generated. There is a TFA device tree, which will have your clock and configuration. So we stated earlier in the day that the clocks are controlled by the TFA. The DDR configuration is always in the TFA because the first stage bootloader has to load the environment where U-Boot needs to go and U-Boot is running under the DDR. And it also does the generic peripheral assignments. The U-Boot device tree will specify any new specific peripherals that you want to stream your um, Linux kernel from for things like Ethernet or USB, things like that. And then finally, you will have a device tree for your Linux, which will be used by all the peripherals at runtime. So this is actually what you're going to then configure for running your application. So what we have here on the left are all the include files that you will have to generate a device tree. So you've got all your DTS, so device tree source includes. So you've got the things for the pin controls and then you've got the generic memory map of the device type that we're using which for our board is the 157C device. All of these includes then will then generate the boards. So we have board families, so we have the um, eval board daughter card and we have the DK1 and those two are subsets of the board variants which are the eval board so the eval daughter card sits on the eval board and the dk1 is a subset of the board variant which is the dk2 and then once you've got your device tree sources you can then generate with a device tree compiler your device tree blobs which is what your linux environment needs to um, use to configure the chip so there's one device tree blob for each of those boards that we've got in the middle. So the family boards and the particular variants of the boards. So for TFA, we have a different subset. So you have the same device layouts for pin control and the memory map. But now on the bottom left, you've got the source files for the DDR3, for the particular types of DDR you're using on your target board. And we've got the device tree source for the security parts. So remember, TFA is your secure booting system. So you now need your DDR to integrate in there. And you need the security elements to do that. And again, you will get a device tree blob file for each of the four boards that we had previously. Then for U-Boot, we will have a dedicated source file source include for U-Boot. We will also have, if you're using U-Boot um, SPL, you will also need the DDR source includes as well. So that will be there for the uh, SPL board U-Boots. And again, it'll generate one of these for each of those four boards available. So you'll get a standard U-Boot file and you'll get an SPL U-Boot file for that. The clock tree, as we've stated, 
is configured by the TFA, so it's done at boot time, and it goes into the device tree for the TFA. So your clock tree is the second tab in the Cubamex, so by default you normally open the tool with the pinout tab available. So you have to switch to the second tab, which is the clock tree tab, and this is where you go and set up your crystals, your PLLs, your multipliers, and for some of the peripherals you will have multiple clock sources, and you decide at this point how you want to clock your entire system. So if you're using some of the low power modes of the device, and you want to um, have certain serial comms features running when you put the device into low power mode, you might want to select the clock source to be slightly different to the rest of the application, as an example. And it's all done graphically. So everything's done in the, the screen, as you can see on the bottom. And you just click and select each of those items. So here you can see our timer one clock. So we'll be playing with this later on. Um, it's coming from our HSE. You can see all the PLLs there for dividing timer one. You can see it's PLL 3P that's coming in. We're running the uh, Cortex M4 at full speed. So the 209 megahertz and you can see that the timer one is running at half of core speed so it's divided by two for part of it and one of the other sections of the timers are running at full speed and you can see here that you get when you build this project you can see your code configuration going through with all the pll's and a new file will appear once you've built the project which will be the dts file in the dfa so you can see there that it generates a DTS file with the file name that we've selected. So you'll see all this as we go through the um, hands-on next. So when you come to configure your timer, once you've selected the timers on the left-hand side, so once you highlight timer number one, you then decide which context you want to use. So we're using A7 non-secure, which means it can be used by M4 or the A7. And this is where it all gets generated into the device trees. So if you selected Cortex M4, then it wouldn't appear in the TFA one. It'll be appear probably in the kernel side at that point.